The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Trooper Thomas L. Clardy, 77th Recruit Training Troop, end of watch, March 16th, 2016. Trooper McClarty, the staff of Spindle City Straight Talk and South Coast Media, remember you and your family, we ask that you rest in peace. The final inspection. The policeman stood and faced his God, which has always come to pass. He hoped his shoes were shining, just as brightly as his brass. Step forward now, policeman. How shall I deal with you? Have you always turned the other cheek? To my church, have you been true? The policeman squared his shoulders and said, No, Lord, I guess I ain't, because those of us who carry badges can't always be a saint. I've always had to work most Sundays, and at times my talk was rough, and sometimes I've been violent, because the streets are awfully tough. But I never took a penny that wasn't mine to keep, though I worked a lot of overtime when the bills got just too steep. And I never passed a cry for help, though at times I shook with fear, and sometimes, God forgive me, I wept unmanly tears. I know I don't deserve a place among the people here. They never wanted me around except to calm the fear. If you have a place for me here, Lord, it needn't be so grand. I've never expected or had too much, but if you don't, I'll understand. There was a silence all around the throne where the saints had often trod as the policeman waited quietly for the judgment of his God. Step forward now, policeman. You've borne your burdens well. Come walk a beat on heaven's streets. You've done your time in hell. Uh, very, very well done, CJ. Uh, rest in peace, trooper. Um, welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. It's a Friday. Uh, we started on an extremely somber note. You could always remember the sacrifice is all public safety employees. This is uh, not an easy day today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry about the laughter, but uh, and uh, it's uh, well, it's, it's a, been a little crazy. And uh, you know, when this happened uh, two days ago, you know, the state came into mourning and. Uh, Whenever we lose a public safety official, um, I cry sometimes those un unmanly tears. And uh, I think it's necessary that we remember that these are men that put their lives on the line every day, whether they be police, fire, EMS, they all do it. And they do it for a better community and a better country. And. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we I, we ne we you we should you know we should never forget. I went to far too many funerals uh, and walked in far too many profession processions for police and firefighters and uh, who died in the line of duty. And uh, that's why it bothers me so much when we deal with uh, projected cuts in these in these departments for political reasons. So, mm -hmm. uh, welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. I'm C.J. And I'm Carlos. And uh, I, the only thing I'm going to add is to uh, the fact that you just answered the question, a lot of people say, how come you friends with CJ? Because CJ uh, is not just a complainer. CJ has his sides, his good side. And, and knowing CJ uh, and Chip, uh, not too long, I, I, I know the good sides of them, the side of them, and that's why uh, I'm friends with them. We disagreed and, and some stuff, but we always um, have agreed in once, uh, on the good side. So um, with that said, thank you, CJ, it was, was very nice. Yeah. Well, thank you, Carlos, I appreciate it. But uh, you know, while we all have a hard side, guess what? We all have a, a soft side too. And my soft side is with uh, 
our public safety, and uh, it, it always it always rings uh, tremendous for me. So. Yeah, everybody has a yin and yang, but yep. let's get back to the business of the city at hand. Right? Well, you know, I, I I'm trying to debate on what to debate, what to talk about first. <laughs> and so and I'm, I'm looking gonna, for the menu. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at the menu. <laughs> yeah. There's too many. This is like a yeah. This is like a smorgasbord. Yeah, board. exactly. But you know, <laughs> let's talk about the state transportation plan. Uh, you know, on on this particular Friday before our show, the uh, state representatives and uh, state senator t taped their show. And, you know, several years ago, we knew that South Coast Rail was dead. Now, again, they're trying to revitalize it with $148 million for South Coast Rail. Uh, you know, we've been saying this for 30 years. It's kind of like as long as the Braga Bridge has been worked on. <laughs> and yeah. guess what? The people have already accepted that South Coast Rail isn't going to happen anymore. So if you're going to use this for a political ploy to get reelected, don't bother. The people aren't buying it anymore. They bought that bull for long enough. The soup is sour. Let's not go there. Okay, <laughs> let's throw let's throw another little angle into this deal. We all know, and even the Messiah Melian admitted this thing was never going to be right. Um, you know, so when he throws the towel in and he stops stops holding up pie in the sky, you know we're in trouble. We all knew that. We, you know, this thing will, ne you know, it won't get down here in our lifetime. It'll probably never get down here because they they consider us part of Rhode Island. Uh, but the reality is, they, you know, they've got 148 million in in the in the um, transportation budget allocated supposedly and you know what this is this is the state hiding money because they're going to divert this money you mock my words they're not going to spend 148 million bucks on the south coast rail it's in the budget it's there and it's kind of like the health care fund that the city dips into all the time they they ditch money under the guise of of it's going to be used for this and it's going to be used for that and then ultimately it, it gets uh it gets lost and gets put in other areas. So, you know, thank you, uh, State of Massachusetts. Uh, you know, we know how really committed you are to bringing uh, the South Coast Rail to to uh, Fall River. And in reality, I've always not been a real proponent of the South Coast Rail anyway, except, you know, if I wanted to make a more convenient trip to Boston, because if they ever did, we ever did get a rail, down here it would be it would be most of the passengers would be leaving fall river <laughs> going toward boston not coming to fall river this because is true it's, it's obvious it's obvious by you know, the way this city is going um and I, it's, it's ironic because i just left the the government center uh i had a meeting uh of the insurance advisory committee oh a nauseous meeting yeah and and uh <laughs> And I ran into I ran into a taxpayer on uh, you know waiting for the elevator, and uh, she looked at me and said, shook her head and said, "Wow," she said, "this city just keeps getting worse and worse." And I said, and she said, "If I could afford it, I'd move out." She said, "But I'm on a fixed income." And you know, I hear that a lot, and this is this is the problem that we have. You know, we got too much pie in the sky. A state delegation will throw bouquets and say how we're moving forward all the time. And, you know, if you go out in the streets the way we do and talk to people like we do here, mm -hmm. we know that uh, nobody's believing that anymore. Uh, yeah. And the, the funny part is uh, what we hear from politics, it's opposite what we hear um, from neighbors. Right. The neighbors True. tell us that they want to move. The politics tell us it's no homes for sale. Uh, right. You know, I, I, a lot of people looking for homes, and, and it's no homes for sale. I just heard that a couple of no days ago. No homes for sale. No really. homes for sale. You know, we have more demands than we have homes. And I'm thinking, but where this information is coming from, you know, well, because the th the thing that I gets hear me everybody wants a mobile. And the thing that gets me is if there's no homes for sale, how come we need more apartments? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, you know. they, yeah, well, but uh, look, please don't don't make that <laughs> logical <laughs> assumption. Don't think I mean, logical yeah, again. Yeah, I don't know. get logical. <laughs> on it. You know, it, yeah, it's ironic because uh, you know my neighborhood. Uh, I've lived in my neighborhood a very long time, and very rarely uh, the, the houses where did you see houses up for sale? Like, mm -hmm. You know, they stayed, in, you know, in houses for a very long time, and it was ironic. I I you know, went around the block the other day, and there's two houses on the next street with for sale signs right I, yeah you know that i know those people have been there for yeah. decades and you know there's a for sale sign yeah. so if anybody's looking for homes i 
I see for sale signs all over the city. I don't know why they, they can't and find one any thing that I'm being noticing, too hard. And one thing that I've been noticing is the house, as soon as the house, they build new homes, as soon as the house is done, people move in. But two years after, you drove by the, the house, and the house is for sale. It's vacant. It's for sale. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's like, Yeah, because they, they smarten up. They say, i got to get out of town fast. <laughs> so, well, you know, the next item up for bids on the prices, right? Uh-oh. <laughs> is the South Coast lawsuit against Stewart over creating a cardiac catheterization lab. And guess what? The court threw it out. Like we didn't know that was going to happen. Yeah. I mean, come on. You, you don't, mean that nonprofit? That yeah, the nonprofit. Fees, the yeah, the nonprofit, nonprofit that pays us not a dime doesn't want anybody interfering with their ability to make money. Yeah, exactly. And now Stewart can do cardiac catheterizations right here in Fall River. They wanted to stop that because that leads to the next thing. That means they'll start doing uh, electrophysiology. They'll start doing EP stuff for the heart. You know, defibrillators, pacemakers. Oh, wait a minute. Then they might move into cardiac open heart surgery, kind of like South Coast has done. They don't want competition. You know, this is kind of ridiculous. Mm. And it scares me anyhow because we know what Boston physicians say about Charlton. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm not even going to go there. But it, it's just amazing that even after they're slapped, their attorneys are reviewing the case to see if they're going to file another case against them. You know what? It's done. They got their license. Move on. Competition is a good thing. It's a good thing in medicine. Unlike your hospitalist system, which is a dismal failure and is putting patients in, in danger. Yeah. So I don't want to hear about it. It's amazing how much money this nonprofit will spend to maintain their profit margin. Exactly. I, I know. But, you know, that was another uh, piece of information another that came out on yesterday. I will pass on this one so I don't have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, if you do, you got a choice of hospitals now. If you do, you got, you got your choice or take a cab to Boston if you exactly. want to live. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, hop an air flight. That's right. Uh, okay, back to the Talbot student who was uh, assaulted by a, allegedly assaulted allegedly. by a Fall River substitute teacher who had been summoned into court. Now, our friends over on Channel 10 following up on this story uh, after Fox 25 picked it up um, and we had talked about it a lot as well actually found the teacher the substitute teacher uh, a gentleman by the name of Stefan Michaud who when contacted had no clue he was being charged criminally he had no clue what had happened and his comment was before you judge know all the facts now, the child, and I'm not going to name the child, although other news media have done that. I don't believe in that. And, you know, the mom has gone very public with it, so we know what's going to go on there because she wants full restitution and she wants the teacher to serve time. Um, was in a behavioral class. He was in a special class for, I guess, children with behavioral issues. Uh, and, you know, in that industry, you have to have a lot of patience. But my question is, how can the accused not know he was accused? He, he, didn't read the, he didn't watch the news. He didn't read the paper. He didn't listen to the radio. It's been on all media. And isn't, he a, isn't he an attorney? And he is. He's a retired attorney in Lakeville. Wow. So now, now he's, in, he's in the box. <laughs> Maybe now we know why he substitute teaching. <laughs> that too. <laughs> but, you know, this is... And parents are infuriated. They are so upset about this. And Carlos, this is in your neighborhood. This yes. is your fault. <laughs> yeah, I know. Mean, yeah. And when it comes to Talbot, um, and I, I had mentioned this uh, on last week's show, uh, the Neighborhood News, um, we, are, we work very close with all the schools on our neighborhood. And that school, uh, for I don't know which reason, um, maybe the principal, it's an old school, um, he, he really don't allow much contact from um, the neighborhoods or, or the community into the school. We invite them like we invite all the other schools for cleanups, for get-togethers, uh, for uh, Christmas shows, uh, for Christmas shows, all that, and, and we never get even an answer from them. So, I, you know, what comes to Talbot, I really don't know much about the school and how uh, the school is run. The only thing I, I know for sure is 
we need to get into the schools and talk to these kids and, 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 and tell them about um, community, how, how they can help community, how they can get involved, mm. uh, how uh, uh, when they leave their school, it's something they need, to, it's a rule they need to follow. The rule, it's not followed just inside the school. You need, you have rules when you step outside the school. Yeah. Well, and, and we are, they are, you know, answering. They, they kept them, everything for themselves. And now we have, in, in two days, we have boom, boom, something. Yeah, we, had, we had the stabbing there. And, and, yeah. and, and obviously, uh, I have been told by some very reliable sources that there are gang problems in that school. So we have 13-year-olds and 12-year-olds that are already in gangs. Mm -hmm. And that stabbing um, was a very, very severe attack. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, from what I understand, they were trying to send a message. So. From a very reliable source, uh, you know, this, 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 uh, this 30 year old was was really carved up pretty badly and uh, that's I mean that's pretty that that's 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 pretty sobering when you think of uh, you know teenagers mm -hmm. well the other one was an, uh, an adult by law he was 18 I believe but the other ones were actually uh, still juveniles mm -hmm. and you know they have the you know you know they they don't think twice about attacking an adult yeah. with knives and it, there's some there's some and serious this is issues not a uh, 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 it's something that just happened right. they 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 planned it yeah. right. they knew that the, the the they knew the person was coming yeah okay and and the, and the the fact that it was planned was because it was other kids that don't belong to that that school so they don't even have you know well, you could say we could, <laughs> we go with the gangs and stuff so again let's uh Let's let's bury let's pretend that these things don't happen. Mm -hmm. Let's and let's talk about the tourism corridor. Yeah, you know, and, <laughs> and things like that, and and have Operation Diamond rather than Operation. Let's socialize, uh, you know, the city, and let's let's deal with some of our major issues, and you know, one of which is crime. Yeah, and it, the big, you know, the big, I mean, the this big thing is we have crazy. here, though, the big thing we have here, though, Chip, is the fact that. As Carlos reported, there is a school a school within our system mm -hmm. that is isolating itself mm -hmm. from the city, mm -hmm. from the neighborhoods. And we have to ask ourselves why. Now we've seen this in the city in the past, and it's usually because the school is having severe issues, mm -hmm. some serious problems. And I think that these two incidences are showing how much of a serious problem this school is having. And for the school department to not make any comments on camera, uh, and Mr. Coogan denying on-camera interviews to the press, and then not addressing this publicly to allay the feel, fears of the parents and guardians of children that are in that school system, you have to ask yourself, what do you have to hide? Because that's the impression you're giving. It, it may not be what's actually happening, but to Fall River mm -hmm. and to many people in Fall River, just like the general public everywhere else, perceptions become their reality. And if the perception is that you're trying to hide all of this, what do you have to hide? Well, I think, I think a lot of it's got to do with the fact that the way we do everything in this community, and that's be reactive rather than proactive. Um, you're not gonna tell me that, that these people don't know there are issues within their schools. Mm -hmm. these, you know, they, they see these students every day. If they're gang issues and stuff, they, they know. They can tell factions. And it's not like we're trying to reinvent the wheel. It, it's like there have been cities like L.A. that have had massive gang problems for years. There are a lot of different kinds of programs that have been tested and proven to be effective in kind of, in, in basically helping to deal with these problems. Mm -hmm. And... You know, the problem with Fall River is, and we can go back to Eddie Lambert, and I remember when Eddie Lambert categorically denied the, the existence of gangs in Fall River. He said, we don't have gangs in Fall River, which was absolute crap. I mean, it was a while back now, but somebody, uh, some, uh, the Bloods and the Crips had an argument, and some guy got shot on Quickishan Street in an entry, mm -hmm. shot to death. And, you know, but this is what we do in Fall River. We pretend. 
We pretend that we're getting better. We pretend that things are good, and we, we name things, and we, we say we're going to make beaches but and, you know and, and why, waterfronts. And you know why rather we than pretend. Being pro, rather than be proactive and say, look, we got a problem. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. There have been cities that have had major gang problems that have tried a lot and done through trial and error and have proven certain things effective. Why don't we reach out to those people mm -hmm. and try to help our city? But again, this is a perfect example. Our school schools have problems. But if those problems come on the front of the paper, they're not going to reach the numbers that they want to reach to get money from the state. So we need to kind of keep everything quiet, everything, you know, and close doors. So this way, the school is doing great, you know. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because out, out in the hallway there, and I had a copy in my car, and I meant to bring it in because um, I looked at it last week. There was They had a science... Award, I forgot the name of the, the Region place. Three Science yeah. Fair. So Re Region Three Science Fair, and they had a list of probably I don't know, 80 awards that they gave right. out, and they had the schools, and they had first place, second place, honorable mention, and uh, and I will Monday remember to bring it in. I will give kudos to the one Fall River student who won an award. She won two awards. She got a second place. And I believe maybe an honorable mention or, or another second place. But you looked at those, you looked at the, the science awards and you look at, you look at, and what are they? Not one, one student out of 80 categories or something like that was from Fall River. And you know something? Kudos to that girl, and I'm sure we've got children that are capable. Why well, don't we? Why don't we cultivate programs? We spend millions of dollars on administrators, and this is what helps our youth stay out of gangs, mm -hmm. stay out of stay out of trouble because you cultivate a knowledge. You're not telling me there aren't people who are in, who are who like math and like science. This girl. Why, and I want to I want to see what the school's got for a girl like this that's already placed. What kind of, you know, extra, ex, you know, why don't they set up after school programs mm -hmm. for these people to cultivate these things? This is money well spent. Mm -hmm. You know, not not getting another administrator or having Meg Mayo Brown and a, and, a, and a band of merry thieves figure out how many more new administrative six-figure posi uh, positions we can create. Why don't we put more teachers in the classroom? Why don't we dedicate some money to, to programs to cultivate, to cultivate people in, in, in academic activities and in athletic activities which, which develop character? But no, what we continue to do is say, oh, the school system's doing fine. And then we see it failing. We see, we see our, our students not getting to the, to their, not realizing their full potential. And it's, it's, it's a travesty. You know, because it's it's all we ever do in this city, and you know, and you know, go ahead, call me negative. I don't care. <laughs> negative, not, negative. It's not <laughs> negative. It's it's a fact. It's a fact. These things are. You know, we have a failing school system. We're not. And and by the way, as I told you, CJ, we people who call us negative, we can't be negative because we're either positive or we're positive by default. That's because it. if he's negative and I'm negative, two negatives make a positive. Mm -hmm. So we're positive. That's it. So, <laughs> so forget about that stuff. But, I, but let's talk about reality here. We have, these are, this is the, you know, this is the future of fall rubber, the children. And, and to allow them to go down a wrong path and not commit every single dollar that we can to try to make them realize their full potential. It's to me disgraceful. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you keep the school committee chairman away from the reorganization of the school department. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know about the uh, Region Three Science Fair. You know, years ago, years, years back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, I was a contestant in the Region Three Science Fair. Two years in a row, both years I won top honors. I won first place in biology, and I, in, one ep, in one year, I actually bred chickens. I raised them. I, I did, you know, it was always interesting. And in another year, I did on uh, medicine. 
So it was a very good, and it was the best experience I had when I was a child growing up. And that program is amazing. And for only one student, because when I participated, we must have had 80 kids from Fall River participate in it. But back then we had programs like advanced language placement, advanced science placement. These were programs within our school system. But, you know, with only a few minutes left. So we're doing better now than we did back I would have then. I would have guessed your science project was on neutrons because they're <laughs> negative. <laughs> well, um, and the last of the uh, fraud reports. <laughs> so, dessert. so this is the dessert now. Yeah, right. this is the dessert right. of the this day. Just a little whipped cream and a, and yeah. a cherry here. Which I've been following this for a long time. Uh, Maya Correa, again, misses OCPF deadlines. And OCPF isn't that hard. It's a very basic system. And the excuse the mayor provided, and I'm going to <coughs> quote him here, uh, if I can find that again. Uh, this is the first time that they're running a mayoral campaign. Guess what, Mr. Mayor? Guess what, boy emperor? Guess what, resident moron? And I'm sorry to put it that way, but you are. The campaign finance rules and campaign finance laws are the same whether you run for city councilor, which you did two years ago, or you run for mayor. There's no difference in the reporting. The only difference is putting it on paper or putting it online. That's the difference. The rules are the same. And for you to say that your treasurer is a volunteer and has a full-time job, ba 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 ba, so on and so forth. Those are excuses. The buck stops. It's a lot of work, too. Right? Yeah, it's a lot of work. The buck stops here. Okay, it stops right on the sixth floor, and it stops with the candidate. Okay, you're joining a very exclusive club, Mr. Mayor. All right, and let's remember, Mr. Mayor, because when the training was offered in Fall River, do you remember where I was sitting? I do. I was sitting right at the sign-in sheet. Not one candidate signed in that I didn't see and make note of. Now, Mr. Mayor, you signed in. Within 10 minutes, you walked out the door because you had a previous engagement. So obviously, you didn't think that the law was important enough for you to comply. Or the training wasn't important enough so that you could comply. And not every candidate showed up either. And that's the thing that scares me. That in Fall River, the law doesn't apply to me the law doesn't apply at all to any elected official because you know what? We always get a finding of no finding. Well, we had one elected official who a couple of years ago got hit with a substantial fine, a very substantial fine. And Mike Sullivan, director of OCPF, says at every single training session, there's one thing you don't want to see in the paper, your name and my name in the same article. And you know what? If, he, if his office doesn't cite you with heavy fines, you've walked away lucky because you know what? I know how much they're looking at you for because you know what? I've been looking at it too and I've been asking the questions. And that's the problem we have is that it's deceit at a magnanimous appoint appointment. It's not that much work. And secondly, let's look at one of the things in the article uh, by Joe Good. He said, uh, also, OCPF identified two donors, local businessman Carl Garcia. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, that's the one in charge of his transition team. Wow, well, yeah. Carl Garcia. Carl and Garcia is the same guy who got his license to run his auto body shop renewed blanketly when he forgot to renew it, which he's supposed to go through the entire process all over again, but they waived that for him. And local developer Kenneth Steen, let's, let's look for his name on on some of this, uh, some of these new projects, right? Uh, donated uh, more than the allowed $1,000 in 2015. So look, we see this all the time. Uh, you know, the last show uh, we were talking about the kangaroo court and the donations <laughs> to the mayor. So let's hope, uh, let's hope we all stay angry, all stay involved, and uh, let's uh, let's keep them, let's keep their feet to the fire. And see you next week. And have a good weekend. See you next week. Have a great weekend, everyone.